Hi, this is Christine. Welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. In today's video, I want to show you some chunky charms that I made. This is not all one embellishments. I have five of them on here. I like displaying them on this banana holder. This is what I like to use when I'm making my charms because I can hook the chain up and then as I attach the beads, I can see how they fall down. So I'm just going to quickly show you the different charms that I've got and then I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make one like this one. This one is a little bit smaller than the other ones and this is for um, for a cell phone. So you don't want them to be as clunky as the larger ones that can be used on purses. Now you could also use this on a mini album or a journal but I made them quite thick and heavy so if you were going to use this for a journal to attach to the spine you could probably remove half of the charms and make two out of one but uh, I made this extra chunky because I wanted it to be um, a purse charm. So I'm going to put my camera back in the stand and I'll show you the charms and then I'll do a quick tutorial on how I made this smaller charm. This is my first set of chunky charms and these are made mostly from vintage beads. I had some old necklaces and I took them apart and then I reassembled the beads with little bead caps and I put some some other beads in with them to make the charms and this is what it looked like this bucket was half full and I made all these little individual charms that I then then attached together to make these longer strands so on this one I have a little pair of sunglasses on the end, a cactus, a little frame, looks like a little frame where you could attach a little photo there, um, a shell, seashell, and an octopus. I had a bit of a sea theme going and here's a little sailboat and a ship's wheel pair of angel wings and these are all pretty beads well, this is the next one and on this one I have a horse four leaf clover A hand and a little cherub with a heart and this is another actually that's not a four-leaf clover that's just a flower this is a four-leaf clover and then I've got another two horses a little windmill These are the pretty beads. This one I think is kind of cute. It's, um, it's based on a sewing theme. I'm working on a sewing journal. So I ordered these little charms to use in my journal and I had some extras. I have a pair of scissors, a sewing machine, And here I've got some little knitting needles and a ball of wool, some measuring tape, another sewing machine, a hanger, clothes hanger, a little iron. a button and this is a bead where I wrapped some wire around. The fourth large one 
I have a little bottle opener. Another bead that I wrapped with wire. Butterfly. Horse. A leaf. A cactus. And this is a little bead that I just wrapped some chain around. And a cat. And an umbrella. And finally, this is the smaller one. And I'll show you how that attaches onto my, uh, my phone. So here I have a heart. A little bead again wrapped with wire and a little seashell at the end. These are pretty, pretty little beads and when I assembled them I put a little piece of chain from top to bottom. I think it looks really cute. And I have a pair of sunglasses here. And this is another bead that I made and again I wrapped some chain between the two beads and down to the uh, the bottom bead. So I'll show you how I attach this. I just take a piece of of yarn. I like this eyelash yarn. Just attach a knot like that. I like using this pretty yarn because it goes well with the charms too. And then I just attach my chunky charms to the yarn at the top. And just let it dangle down. So I'll do a quick tutorial on how I made this. It's very simple to do. So I'm going to start by assembling my my chain and my lobster clasp. It's on this chunky charm, my chain measures I think about two and a half inches yeah about two and a half inches now usually I like using these split rings to attach the lobster clasp to the chain because it carries the weight of the entire chunky charm I use just regular um, jump rings to attach the beads to the chain now I didn't have uh, a silver colored split ring because I'm using the silver colored chain but I did have a, um, a jump ring that was considerably thicker than the other ones I used just for the charms so I use this to attach my lobster claw clasp and this is what it looks like and it's got a little space at the end where I can run a jump ring through so I went ahead and attached this one to my chain. I'm going to cut my length. Maybe, maybe I'll do that now. So I'm going to go about the same as this one. Two, two and a half inches. Because I'm going to start by attaching my large charm at the bottom and then I can attach my charms from the top down. So there we go. It doesn't look like it's very long, but I'm also going to attach my bead that's going to hang down at the bottom. 
Normally when I work, I would use this banana stand and attach my chain and work so that my beads are just hanging down and I can sort of plan how I want to lay them out. But for the sake of doing this tutorial, it's going to be easier if I work on a flat surface with my camera stand. That. Now when I'm attaching my, my beads, I'll pick from a, a selection. I've already got a bunch of charms that I made. And there are, some are gold colored, some have silver in them. I mix them all up. Uh, for my chain though, I like having the same color of uh, jump ring or split ring as my chain, but that's just a personal preference. But I will mix up the uh, gold and silver colored charms and I'm just going to use my little silver jump rings to attach them. Now I'll do a quick example of how I make a charm. Some I've used these eye pins and others I've just used this wire and this is especially useful if you have a longer charm that you want to make. I only have this length eye pin left and they're not very long so I'm going to use the wire for this example and I'm going to make a charm that's similar to this one or I'm going to make one that's similar to this one. So I start by, I'm not going to cut my wire right now. I'm just going to start by feeding my beads through and I'm going to work from the bottom up. So I'm putting my little white bead and then this orange bead. Then I'm going to put a bead cap on here. I'm going to use this one, a little gold bead cap. And I'm going to top it off with another small white bead. So now I'm going to form the, the loops at the top and the bottom. And I'm not very good at looping, so I got this one step looper. And I find sometimes I need to just flatten these out a little bit if I didn't do it properly. Like that. The nice thing about the one step looper is, let's say I had started with a large piece of wire. I couldn't with this one because it's it's coiled up, but I could start with a long piece of wire and when I stick it in here, it comes out the back and it's going to cut right here so I'm not wasting the wire. So there's my, my bead ready to use. So I would make a whole bunch of beads like this and then I can lay them out as I work. So I'm going to start by deciding which bead I'm going to have hanging at the bottom of my chain. So I'll just take a a few of these out. Now, maybe I'll use the one that I just made. I'll use this one at the bottom, like that. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. This beading can really do a number on your nails. 
actually I think this has a little silver cap so I'm going to use that one with my silver chain. So there's my bottom. So now I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So one on this side, the second link I'm going to put on the left, third link on the right, fourth link on the left, and so on. And for the very top, I like starting off with a small charm. So I'll pull a few more of these out. This is cute and this and I can attach little charms on the end after so I'm going to attach these two I split my ring And then I close it. So I'm going to attach the next one on the next link on the left. Now for the other ones, I'm going to use some longer charms. So I'm going to use maybe this one and also I can use some that dangle a bit more. Like these. And maybe I, I can attach some of these together. So I'm going to put this one. Actually, I already have an orange bead there, so I'm going to use this one. And I think I'm going to attach this green this green bead. So they can be a little bit longer at the top and they're not going to go down beyond my bottom bead. And then as I go down to the bottom I can make them a little bit shorter again.
I wish I could really work that fast. So I think I've got enough charms on here. If you wanted to make it even chunkier, you could keep adding more all the way down, but I don't want it to be too, too bulky. Another option is to skip some of the chains as you're putting your beads on, or skip some of the loops as you're adding your beads, and that will make it a little bit less chunky. But I think this is pretty good for attaching to a cell phone. So now I want to add a few little charms to the ends. So I'm going to move the beads away. And I picked out some charms, and I don't want them to be too too bulky either. So I'm going to start with the top and I think I'll put this cute little Eiffel Tower on there. the other side. I have this little hand. So I'm keeping the really small charms for the top. I can go a bit bulkier in the middle and then I think I'm going to put one down at the bottom. Use a seashell. And there's my chunky charm. Try putting this on here. a little bit chunkier than the other one I think but it's not too chunky. Now you can also attach these to um, to journals and planners and um, your purse, computer case, um, a light pole although if you're using um, a pole on a light or a, a fan um, you want to make sure that this is going to be very strong. I would probably use the split rings for all the charms because if you're pulling on it, you don't want these to come undone. And um, yeah, so you want to, you want the whole thing to stay very secure if you're going to be pulling on it. But just dangling like this off of my cell phone or a planner, I don't anticipate that um, they would suffer too much too much damage. So I hope you found this little tutorial useful. Beading is a lot of fun. It's easy to do, but it's time consuming by the time you create all of your little charms and put them on, but it's a great pastime. And if you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to try. Have a nice day and happy crafting. Bye.